Chapter 1. I Must Be a Fake MC. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Translator. Atlas Studios Editor. Atlas Studios Shintian was very depressed. He had transmigrated to a world of cultivation. He had become the thirteenth prince in the country of fire at the eastern wilderness in this new world of cultivation. What was there to complain about being a prince? Well, he was not just a prince. He was a prince known for his extreme, bad luck. His mother was concubine Lan, the most beautiful lady in the country of fire and the person the king adored a lot. Her imperial status was very close to that of the queen. Under normal circumstances, concubine Lan's son would have a decent chance to become the crown prince in the future. However, on the day of delivery, Concubine Lan had died due to severe hemorrhage that was caused by dystocia. From then on, the king had been loathing the thirteenth prince's presence a lot. Thus, his imperial status had started to decline rapidly. As the thirteenth prince grew older, his luck was becoming worse and worse. He had a gorgeous flaming bird as his spirit pet, but it had drowned in the imperial garden. He had an expensive purple epiphyllum, but a random kid with no manners had uprooted it. He had followed his cousins to the Directorate of Imperial Academy to study once. And the building collapsed the very day. Besides having bad luck in his daily activities, the 13th Prince also had a challenging cultivation journey. Today was the 88th time that he suffered from Qi deviation. Unfortunately, he did not make it this time. The thirteenth prince had not been believing in destiny and had been trying to fight against it, but the latter got the better of him. Now, his body belonged to Shen Tian, a well-educated youth from the twenty-first century. Water. Get me some water. Shen Tian lay on the bed in anguish. The feeling was almost unbearable, and it affected his stomach. An old eunuch rushed over with a teapot and attended Shen Tian. Your Highness, here's some water. Drink it slowly. He was eunuch Gui, head of housekeeping of Lem's palace and the only eunuch that was in Lem's palace right now. It could be said that he had brought up the thirteenth prince himself. Shen Tian felt much better after drinking the water. He looked at this old eunuch and was stunned. He recognized this person from the thirteenth prince's memory. Eunuch Gui had been in the palace since he had been a child and had been working there for more than fifty years. Concubine Lan had saved his life before, and thus he was very loyal to the thirteenth prince. However, unlike what he remembered, there was a halo floating on Eunuch Gui's head. Yes, it was a green dot glowing halo. Shen Tian was shocked by what he was seeing. The halo was similar to the one angel seemingly had, just that the color was very different. Am I seeing things? Shen Tian rubbed his eyes and looked again. The halo was still there. Clearly, it was not his imagination. Uncle Gui, could you pass me a mirror? Eunuch Gui fetched over a mirror in no time. When Shen Tian looked at his reflection in the mirror, he finally understood why the thirteenth prince had been so unlucky. His face was handsome. Very, very, handsome. Concubine Lan had been the most beautiful lady in the country of fire, and he had inherited her best genes. At the age of sixteen, the thirteenth prince had looks no one could match. Even Shen Tian felt attracted to himself. However, that was not the main issue. He had a halo on his head too, just like Eunuch Gui. The only difference was that his halo was pitch black, with inky mist surrounding it. It looked like it was filled with all the adversity and ominous things in the world, and it was really terrifying. Dot obviously, that could not be good. Could this be the physical manifestation of bad luck? So, is the exemplification of the saying, your glabella seems dark. Shen Tian went back lying on the bed, as he needed some time to himself. Other transmigrators have main character buffs, and their halos must be shining in golden rays. As for me. Just the look of it sent chills down Shen Tian's spine. He felt that he could probably get struck by lightning even if he went out on a sunny day. I must be a fake MC. 
It would be a lie to say he was not worried about the dark halo on his head. Forget about cultivation, adventures, treasure hunts, and tribulations. He was very likely to choke on the food he was eating and pass away. Uncle Goe, I'm tired. You can go now. Shen Tian decided to rest for now. Currently, it was impossible to go outside. Before he fully recovered, the only safe thing to do was to lie on the bed. Your Highness, I will excuse myself and brew medicinal herbs for you. Yunik Gui had no idea that the boy lying on the bed now was not the thirteenth prince he knew. He closed the door gently so that Shen Tian would not catch a cold and went to the kitchen. Shen Tian behaved himself for the entire month. He did not secretly cultivate or fool around. He did not even go out of his bed. Finally, under Yunik Gui's care, Shen Tian started to recover slowly. It's been a month. One, entire, month. God knows how I managed to survive this. Shen Tian finally lost patience. He could only lie on his bed without a phone, computer, or even a novel to read. This boring life was driving him crazy. Shen Tian realized that freedom was more precious than life itself. Thus, he decided to go out for some fresh air. Chapter 2 A very lucky eunuch you are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Shen Tian climbed out of his bed and shouted, Uncle Gui. I need a bath right now. I'm going to take a walk. Your Highness, I'll get the bath ready. Eunuch Gui was excited about it too. The prince had been bedridden for the entire month, and he had been feeling sorry for him. In the past, the thirteenth prince would be very emotional whenever he had suffered qi deviation. As soon as he would recover a little bit of his vitality, he would get out of bed and look for other techniques to continue trying to cultivate. This time, the thirteenth prince, no, Shen Tian, had stayed in bed and behaved himself, so Eunuch Gui had initially been very pleased. The thirteenth prince has finally learned to cherish his body. Concubine Lan can finally rest in peace. Gradually, Eunuch Gui realized it was not that simple. Your Highness is way too careful. Resting in bed and not moving around is indeed a good thing. But he hasn't left the bed at all. Not even for going to the toilet. What's wrong with him? Does he have roots attached to the bed now? For a whole month, Shen Tian had suddenly become extremely cautious. It was simply too abnormal. If Shen Tian had not finally decided to take a bath and go out, Eunuch Gui would have planned to invite the imperial doctor over. He had been suspecting that this time's qi deviation may have injured the thirteenth prince's brain. Soon, Shen Tian cleaned himself and donned on his clothes. He tied up his hair in a bun and wore his embroidered white python robe and golden boots. Shen Tian was dazed by his reflection in the mirror, his looks were breathtaking and prepossessing. If he were still in the twenty-first century, he could at least work twenty years less. Correction, two hundred years less. The only issue was that the mass above his head was as dark as ever. His fair face was darkened by a few degrees due to the halo. I really need to find a way to get rid of this black circle, thought Shen Tian. Any color would be better than this curse dot looking black. While he was still pondering over his issues, Shen Tian finally left Lem's palace. When Shen Tian was walking in the palace, no one dared to go near him within a 10.meter radius. Even the eunuchs and palace maids ran away on the sight of the 13th prince. Shen Tian was unhappy with these reactions. How did this guy manage to survive the past 16 years? Shen Tian started to sympathize with the 13th prince. A few minutes had passed since he had left Lem's palace, and he already felt suffocated by the way everyone looked at him. How had the 13th prince been enduring this for 16 whole years? In the end, instead of giving up on himself, the prince had continued to fight against his fate to the day he died. At the same time, there had been no sign of him going over to the dark side. He had been very similar to the anime character Naruto. 
While walking around in the palace, Chen Tian noticed that others had halos on top of their heads too. Most eunuchs and palace maids had a white dot-colored halo, giving off a weak glow. It looked ordinary, and probably nothing exceptionally good would ever happen to them. The glow of the eunuchs and palace maids with slightly higher imperial statuses was slightly brighter. For eunuchs that had received a title, such as head of cooking, head of clothing, and head of stable, their halos were slightly green in color. Just like eunuch Gui, it was a lively color. So black means bad luck, white means commoners, and green means good luck. What kind of setting is this? Green for four dot leaf clover. The color setting rendered Shen Tian speechless. It sucks. Suddenly, Shen Tian spotted a very peculiar fellow. It was a very common young eunuch. His clothes indicated that he was just a handyman eunuch, the lowest imperial status of all. He looked pale, pathetic, and hopeless. However, what made Shen Tian unhappy was that the halo on top of this young eunuch's head was actually not black, white, or green. It was red. Its bright rays sparked all around like a mini sun. In Shen Tian's eyes, everything in the world would center around this young eunuch. Compared to him, Shen Tian's black halo was hideous, even though his face was stunning. Why would a low dot ranking eunuch have such a flaunting halo? Could he be blessed by providence? Shen Tian's stare made goosebumps rise on the young eunuch's skin. Although he was relatively new here, he had heard some bad rumors about the prince. The thirteenth prince is said to be the most unlucky person in the country of fire. It's advised to stay away from him as much as possible. Or there might be grave danger. Good morning, your highness. The eunuch quickly greeted Shen Tian and tried to excuse himself. However, Shen Tian did not allow him to escape. You. Come here. Upon hearing that, the eunuch was very scared. Seriously. The thirteenth prince asked me to go over. Help. I'm just an ordinary eunuch. What have I done? I heard that the prince's bad luck is contagious in a ten dot meter radius. People will start to ostracize me, and my life will be in danger. I will be dead if I go too near. But if I do not comply, maybe I will die faster. Either way, I'm dead. The young eunuch was at the brink of tears. Chapter 3 Could it be I'm too unlucky? You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Shen Tian questioned with a stern tone, Why? You are disobeying your prince now. I'm here, your highness. The eunuch shivered and quickly knelt before Shen Tian and bowed to him. Even though Shen Tian was not favored by the king anymore, he was the thirteenth prince nonetheless. Disobeying orders and ignorance of status was a capital offense in the palace. Shen Tian was satisfied. He asked, Tell me your name. The young eunuch quickly answered, I'm Qin Gao. You can just call me Gao, your highness. Qin Gao. That sounds like the name of an impressive eunuch. Shen Tian thought for a moment and said, Raise your head, let me see how you look. Qin Gao was terrified. There were rumors about how some people with high imperial status would get bored with women and start exploring possibilities with young children with good looks like him. So the thirteenth prince belongs to one of these people too. The thought of it terrorized Qin Gao. He lifted his head slowly with a shaking body. Shen Tian looked at his face carefully, and his eyes lit up in excitement. Qin Gao was even more worried. Your Highness, is there anything wrong with this young eunuch? Eunuch Gui's voice interrupted Shen Tian's thoughts. Actually, he was not looking at Qin Gao's face, but his halo. While Shen Tian had been observing Qin Gao's halo, he noticed an image projection in it. The image started with the main entrance of the imperial library in the palace. Then, it switched to the interior of the library. 
The image went past many bookshelves and reached the southeast corner and focused on a book named, History of the Great Fire. The image paused before it disappeared. Shen Tian believed that the book History of the Great Fire contained a secret. It most probably had something to do with the red halo on Qin Gao's head. This could be Qin Gao's fortuitous opportunity, leading to a fortune change. If I manage to get this book before this eunuch, maybe his opportunity will become mine, right? Shen Tian thought to himself. He did not think that it was a despicable thing to do so. Only the fittest survived, that was the rule in the cultivation world. The consequences could be dire if one was too naive. This opportunity was not the main issue Shen Tian was concerned with. He needed to find a way to change his own fortune. If not, he was sure to suffer an ugly death. That's all. You can leave now. Shen Tian left and quickly made his way to the Imperial Library. The Imperial Library of the Country of Fire was located in the middle of the palace. Many rare books could be found there. Naturally, books containing advanced cultivation techniques were kept at the library's core area, and they were well dot guarded by skillful personnel. Without the token of fire, even princes like Shen Tian could not access those books. Fortunately, this history of the Great Fire was just a common historical book. Shen Tian recalled the path the image had followed and swiftly located the book. The book was about 10 centimeters thick and looked dusty and old. When compared to the other thousands of books, it was not that I dot catching. However, Shen Tian was convinced that it contained some secret. I've got the book now, so my providence should change. Shen Tian took out a mirror from his pocket and had a look. He was as handsome as ever. So was his halo. Shen Tian was disappointed. So, having the book itself is not enough. I need to find some clues from the book to change my fate. Shen Tian quickly borrowed the book and left the Imperial Library. In the next few days, Shen Tian was back to how he had been previously. His activity zone was centered around his bed, and he did not leave the room at all. The only difference was that Shen Tian was now reading the boring history of the Great Fire over and over again. It was a painful process for Shen Tian as he could not gain anything useful from it. The book was simply boring. There were no pictures, no climax, and even the words were squeezed together. No wonder it was left in the corner for years. If Shen Tian had not seen the images from Qin Gao's halo, he would have never touched such a book at all. Could it be I'm too unlucky to spot the secret in this book? This doesn't make any sense. Your Highness, you have been in the room for three days. Eunuch Gui was very worried about Shen Tian. You have been reading this book many times, do you want to take a walk outside? Shen Tian shook his head. There was no way he would leave the palace without cracking the secret hidden in the book. Given his current luck, it was extremely possible for the book to disappear after it was left unattended. He did not dare to take the risk. After three hours, Shen Tian read through the history of the Great Fire again. Other than the content becoming more boring, Shen Tian hadn't found anything else. Shen Tian finally got tired and gave in to his unlucky fate. Maybe I should get someone else to read it. Uncle Gui, come and take a look at this book. Shen Tian passed the book to Eunuch Gui. I have a feeling that this book will give me an opportunity to change my fate. There is an opportunity in this book. Eunuch Gui was not convinced. Although he respected and trusted the thirteenth prince, he knew exactly how lucky his prince was. The prince borrowed a random book from the imperial library, and it contained some hidden secrets. Yeah, sure. Your Highness, since you said so, I'll take a look. Eunuch Gui did not believe he would find anything that would be useful. Nonetheless, Eunuch Gui obeyed and started reading the book carefully. Soon, Eunuch Gui was surprised. Wow, there's really something in this book. Shen Tian was rendered speechless. He was not sure if he should feel happy or disappointed. 
He had spent days researching this book and had not found anything worthy at all. Eunuch Goe only read it for a few minutes, and he had a breakthrough. Seriously. Chapter 4 You need to castrate yourself before learning this secret skill you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios. Shintian sighed and asked, What's it? Your Highness, take a look here. Eunuch Goe flipped to the last page of the book and tore off the hardcover. He used his divinity, and the hardcover split into two different pieces, with something hidden in between. It was a piece of jade wrapped in palm-sized satin cloth. The jade was glowing with light. It is indeed something special. It is probably a skill jade that has a record of the skills passed down from the ancestors. Eunuch Gui did not read through the contents. He handed the items to Shen Tian and said, Your Highness, it is yours. Please take a look. Shen Tian was thrilled and excited. He put the satin cloth on the table and started reading it. It had four huge words written on the top left corner, Demon Book of Huga. Behind these words were smaller words in bright red. You need to castrate yourself before learning this secret skill. Shen Tian almost snapped when reading those words. WTF. This. This is the thing I have been searching for for the past three days. It's so lame. Relax. I need to relax. Shen Tian tried to calm himself down. Maybe there's some providence shining on me now. He took out a mirror from his pocket and looked. Bang! The mirror fell off his hands and shattered on the floor. Eunuch Gui quickly asked, What's wrong with the book, Your Highness? Shen Tian said with a blackened face, Come and look for yourself. Eunuch Gui shook his head furiously. This belongs to Your Highness. I'm not supposed to look at it. It's meant for you, not me. Shen Tian pulled Eunuch Gui to the table. Demon Book of Huga. Eunuch Gui was shocked after reading what was written on it. This. This is Demon Huga's skill book. He was invincible in the eastern wilderness back then. Demon Huga. Shen Tian was confused. You've heard of this person before. I've read about him in an ancient book, Your Highness. Demon Huga was the evilest person 3,000 years ago, recalled Eunuch Gui. Demon Huga was an ordinary eunuch in the country of Kuan in eastern wilderness. He had low imperial status and a bad foundation for cultivation. However, he had strong providence and managed to find part of the lost imperial sutra of Sun in the imperial library. Since there were too many missing parts and the most important guide was missing in the book, it was not possible to be used for learning. A normal person would be caught off guard by the mental demons due to greediness and result in death if they tried to learn it by force. However, Demon Huga had both luck and perseverance. He used himself as a test subject and combined multiple demon arts to the Imperial Sutra of Sun and made an entirely new demon art. It was later named as the Demon Book of Huga. It was much more devious and fatal. It had incredible fast attack speed and could bring up the opponent's desires and mental demons. When the opponents were distracted, the user of this demon art would then make the killing move. It was the most sinister demon art in that era. More importantly, this cultivation technique had extremely low requirements for the foundation of cultivation and could be learned very fast. Demon Huga used this demon art alone and reached the level of nascent soul in merely 50 years. He was well dot respected by people from the same tier, and no one could stand against him. Fifty years might seem very long for some people. Nonetheless, for people searching for immortality, it's extremely short. Even if one cultivates the full version of the Imperial Sutra of Sun, they will be a rare genius to reach the nascent soul in fifty years. However, Demon Huga did not have that talent in the first place. Therefore, this cultivation technique was really one of a kind. Your Highness, this is the heritage of an amazing art. Although it's not an imperial sutra, 
it is more valuable for people who are not very talented in cultivation. Your Highness, you are lucky for once. Who would have thought that there's this incredible demon art hidden in this ordinary book? Her Majesty would be happy for you if she knew it. Eunuch Gue was thrilled as he touched the satin cloth. Demon Hyuga was like a legend among the eunuchs. Every eunuch was dreaming of possessing this demon book of Hyuga. They would not even trade it for a proper imperial sutra. Shen Tian felt uncomfortable knowing how powerful this demon book of Hyuga was. Why the hell is the book not for me? Sure, my mother would feel happy for me. Sure, I'm lucky for once. Bulsh asterisk T. I'm still as unlucky as ever. If it's so rare, Uncle Gui, you can have it. Good luck cultivating this. Although it was not meant for him, it was not so bad for Eunuch Gui to learn the demon art. Shen Tian felt much better on the thought of it. Eunuch Gui was shocked that Shen Tian was giving this rare art to him. He shook his head and said, No, Your Highness, it's for you. How could I have it? What do I have to deserve such incredible art? Shen Tian rolled his eyes and said, So you want me to learn it instead? Eunuch Gui suddenly realized something. Indeed, the prince cannot cultivate this technique. What a poor prince. He finally encountered something good in his life, but he cannot have it. God, why do you have to do this to my prince? Since there's no other way, guess I'll be the one cultivating on this. After some internal struggles, Eunuch Gui decided to obey his prince. The thirteenth prince must have so much trust in me. Twenty years ago, I was falsely accused of stealing treasures in the palace. Concubine Lan was the one who saved my life. Although I did not have much education, I do know to repay people's kindness. When Concubine Lan was around, I served her wholeheartedly with my life. Now she's gone, my loyalty is all yours, your highness. I will train diligently on the demon book of Hyuga daily and swear to God that I'll protect you as long as I'm alive. For people searching for immortality, there would be karma for everything. Thus, making promises and oaths, especially to God, should not be done without consideration. Those demons making random promises would all die in a gruesome way. Eunuch Gui's oath was sincere, as he was indebted to concubine Lan and the prince. Shen Tian believed that he had made the right decision. Although I found the demon book of Hyuga, I'm still unlucky. Shen Tian sighed and was not happy about it. Since I stole this opportunity from Qin Gao, what about him now? He suddenly remembered the common young eunuch Qin Gao. Qin Gao had the most providence in all the people Shen Tian had met, and this demon book of Hyuga was supposed to be his too. Now that Shen Tian had the book, what would happen to Qin Gao? Would he have another opportunity? Or would there be other changes? Shen Tian was extremely curious. Chapter 5 Almost died you are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Shen Tian decided to find Qin Gao. It was not easy to find a specific person in the huge palace. Nevertheless, it would not be an issue if one were acquainted with the head eunuch in the imperial household department. Well, Shen Tian was not acquainted with anyone there. Still, it did not bother Shen Tian as no one dared to disobey the thirteenth prince in the palace. Dot after hearing his request, the head eunuch swiftly took out the schedule with all the eunuch's movements and informed Shen Tian about Qin Gao's whereabouts. After that, he sent Shen Tian out of the imperial household department respectfully. He was too afraid that his imperial household department would suddenly collapse like the directorate of imperial academy. Shen Tian found out that Qin Gao was working for the sixth prince. The sixth prince was called Shen Ao, and he was the most talented in cultivation among all his siblings. At the age of 18, he had accomplished cultivating to the ninth firmament and was very close to reaching the fundamental of immortality. He was a genius seen in the country of fire once in a blue moon. It was said that a supremacy from the Grand White Grotto, heaven had been interested in him and had taken him in as a personal disciple. 
the eastern wilderness had two main branches for cultivation. One was the 36 grotto, heaven, and the other was the 72 blessed land. Grand White Grotto, heaven ranked 10th in its branch. It was a huge opportunity when a supremacy from the Grand White Grotto, heaven took someone in as a disciple. If nothing went wrong, Shin Ao would at least become a perfected one in the Golden Core. If he got luckier, there was a chance for him to reach nascent soul around the age of 500 and become a supremacy that was respected by everyone else. By then, even the King of Fire would be nothing compared to his status. Even the weakest supremacy could live for at least a 1,000 years in the world. They could easily rip mountains apart and split the ocean, a simple status as a king was too insignificant. Thus, Shen Ao enjoyed an incredible social status in the country of fire. The other princes would not pick on him on purpose even though the king of fire was very dotting toward him because they knew it was unnecessary. It was Shen Ao's fate to become immortal when he spent his life cultivating it. Naturally, he had no interest in the throne at all. I wonder what the halo looks like on the sixth brother, Shen Tian thought to himself. He followed the road in the imperial garden and reached the sixth prince's palace. Suddenly, Shen Tian heard a scream, followed by a chain of scolding. Are you blind? You idiot! Do you have any idea how expensive this nine-dot-leaf Ganoderma grass is? Even if you have nine lives, you are nothing compared to it. For the rest of you, take this as a warning. This will be the punishment if you get things messed up next time. Shen Tian looked over and saw a crowd around a well in the imperial garden. The crowd was gathered around a cross on which a badly wounded eunuch was bound. It was Qin Gao. There was a change in Qin Gao's halo. Although it was still red, the color was much dimmer compared to before. Some parts of it had started to look green, and it was not as colorful as before. Isn't Qin Gao a person with good luck? Why is he going through this torture now? This kind of scene surprised Shen Tian. Suddenly, he recalled some of the novels he had read before. Not all main leads had a smooth sailing life awaiting them. Sometimes, they would experience huddles, survive, and kill the enemy. Wait a second. Survive and kill the enemy. Shen Tian was terrified by his thoughts. Who is Qin Gao's enemy now? The eunuch who is beating him now? Or his master Shen Ao? Or? The entire country of fire. Shen Tian remembered what eunuch Gui had said about demon Huga and how he had taken revenge on the country of Kuan. He had slaughtered all the royals just because he had been bullied once in the palace. That day, blood had flowed in the palace like a faulted tap. There had been bodies everywhere. What are you doing, Shen Ao? Shen Tian's lips twitched. He pictured what would happen if he did not interfere with the sequence of events. Qin Gao would be bullied like now and would somehow manage to survive. Then, he would find the book History of the Great Fire and the Demon Book of Huga. He would then escape from the palace and start training this demonic art. After mastering the skills, he would come back for Shen Ao and murder the entire royal family. With the black halo on Shen Tian's head, it was almost certain that he would be caught in the conflicts and die. He was 99.99999% sure about it. Is there a chance that Qin Gao would not try to get revenge after mastering the demon art? Why would he not? I'm trying so hard to survive here and look at what you are doing, Shen Ao. Shen Tian started to curse Shen Ao. So what if you are a genius in cultivation? So what if the elder in the Grand White Grotto, Heaven took you in as a disciple? Continue what you are doing, and we are all going to die. Can you just let me out of this? What should I do now? Shen Tian panicked when he looked at Qin Gao, who was bound on the cross. Should I turn around and walk off? Not a good idea. What I pictured will definitely come true. Or should I wait until they are done beating Qin Gao and make sure Qin Gao is dead in the end? Not a good idea, either. Had it been possible to kill him so easily, would Providence have blessed him like that? 
There was also the black halo on Shen Tian's head now. It would not be surprising if a random expert jumped out of the blue and saved Qin Gao if he tried to kill Qin Gao with his own hands. If he had a little more bad luck, this expert would take Qin Gao in as a disciple and kill everyone here to avenge his student. Although the chances were slim, Chen Tian's mere presence rendered the laws of probability useless. Only Murphy's law would apply now. Forget it. I should save him first. Shen Tian decided to save Qin Gao and build a good relationship with him. Even if Qin Gao managed to learn other skills and came back for revenge in the future, he would at least spare Shen Tian. Yeah, probably. With that in mind, Shen Tian walked up and shouted, Stop. When they heard Shen Tian, everyone took a step back. They greeted Shen Tian and left in a hurry. They seemed very scared of him. Only the eunuch that was beating Qin Gao remained there. He was under someone's order and could not possibly just leave like the rest of them. As Shen Tian approached, the eunuch's face was full of shock, terror, fear, and uneasiness. That was quite a show. Your Highness. What are you doing here? Shen Tian pointed at Qin Gao and said calmly, I'm bringing this guy away. The eunuch was in a dilemma. He just broke the sixth prince's nine dot leaf Ganoderma grass. He ought to die. Thirteenth prince, please don't make it difficult for me. Shen Tian was stunned. Nine dot leaf Ganoderma grass was an important ingredient for concocting the superior, grade foundation establishment pill. It had extremely high value. Thus, it was indeed worth more than the life of a low dot ranking eunuch. I see. Then I'll talk to my cousin personally. It's been a long time since I last spoke to him too. Oh, I miss him so much. A calm but firm voice came from within the palace right after Shen Tian finished his sentence. That's not necessary. Since you are my cousin, you are free to take him away. Too bad I cannot see you personally as I'm in seclusion right now and cannot be disrupted. Li, send them off. Chapter 6 I really cannot do it. You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Shin Ao sounded very young, yet arrogant. In the cultivation world, geniuses were superior to others. However, Shen Tian was surprised that his cousin had given in so easily this time. Logically speaking, well, mostly due to all the novels he had read before, Shen Ao should have stopped Shen Tian from saving Qin Gao. They would then have a tough fight against each other, and Shen Tian would manage to get away with Qin Gao. Well, there was also the anime scenario. Shen Tian and Shen Ao would have a heated debate. In the end, Shen Tian would convince Shen Ao that he was in the wrong, so the latter would let Shen Tian and Qin Gao go willingly. Unexpectedly, now, none of those had happened, and Shen Ao had given in. That did not make any sense as there were rumors in the palace that the sixth prince was rather firm on his ideas. Erm, brother. This eunuch is badly beaten, will he die later? Why not spare some healing medicine to treat his wounds? Shen Tian looked at Qin Gao worriedly. He had suffered at least seventy strokes, and his bones could be seen in some places. Shen Tian felt the pain just by looking at them. This must have bred Qin Gao's hatred if left untreated. When the eunuch heard that Shen Tian was asking for medicine, he quickly said, Every medicine the sixth prince owns is very rare. How could they be used on someone like him? Shen Tian's mouth twitched. What a gullible person. I'm helping your prince to avoid a potential disaster, okay? Maybe he will just come back and teach you a lesson for revenge if his wounds are treated. If not, when this guy comes back as a second demon Hyuga, he will burn all of us to ashes. Even the sixth prince in the palace did not expect Shen Tian to be shameless enough to ask for medicine. He kept silent for a while and said, Well, sure. A jade bottle flew out of the palace and was delivered to Shen Tian's hand. The jade bottle was made from an excellent jade, 
and there were a dozen red pills in it. Even though the bottle was not open yet, a herbal odor spread in the air. Clearly, those were supreme.grade pills. These are healing pills, take them. Lee, send them off. Eunuch Lee stared with his eyes wide open in disbelief. He knew the value of the healing pills. These pills' main ingredients were the hundred dot your ginseng and Ganoderma lucidum, which could only be found in the deep forest. The sixth prince had spent almost two months to refine them personally. No matter what injuries a person suffered, one pill would completely heal them. Normally, it was hard to buy even one pill with gold. The sixth prince gave the entire bottle for free just because the thirteenth prince asked. Since when were they so close? Eunuch Lee sent them off as instructed before he returned to the palace. The gate was closed, and Eunuch Lee stood outside, feeling very puzzled. After some time, he could not hold his curiosity anymore and asked, Your Highness, please allow me to ask one question. Shun Ao's voice came from the palace again. Go on. Eunuch Lee asked, Qin Gao made a deadly mistake, and yet your highness forgave him and gave him pills to heal his wounds. I do not understand. Shun Ao said calmly, Providence is a very mysterious concept. Everyone has their own in the process of cultivation. My foundation establishment is going to succeed soon, and I can get to the Grand White Grotto, heaven. My future will then be very successful. My little cousin's fate can be described as, very special. This period is very critical to me, so it would be best to avoid him. It just meant that. Shen Tian was too unlucky. Shen Ao was on the verge of a breakthrough. He was worried that Shen Tian's mere presence would affect him negatively and might cause qi deviation. Eunuch Li asked again, but if this incident spreads, I'm afraid that people will not respect you as much as before. Shen Ao smiled. An immortal's life is very long. Conflicts and royal majesty are nothing compared to it. There is no need to bother. Eunuch Li said, Your Highness, you are right. I understand now. Good, you can leave now. Go back, take a shower. Do not come near this place until I get out. Shen Tian was not aware of what happened in the sixth prince's palace. He was not very sure how to settle Qin Gao. Should he take him in as his servant? That would be a bad decision as those with main lead characteristics often came with suffering for people around them. For most main characters, their masters, loved ones, and friends would get hurt often, sometimes even leading to death. If none of these had happened before, they could hardly call themselves the main characters. Given his unusual bad luck, Shen Tian felt that he should not take such a risk. It would most likely cost his life. Should he have left him alone? That was not suitable, either. Shen Ao's eunuch had beaten him badly. Who knew what trouble might come after that? Not only that, but Qin Gao was also the only person with extremely good providence that Shen Tian had found so far. Thus, he was a good investigating subject. Besides Qin Gao, Shen Tian had yet to see anyone else whose halo revealed pictures with fortuitous encounters. He was Shen Tian's only chance to change his fate. Qin Gao had already taken one healing pill and was more or less healed. He was very grateful that the thirteenth prince had appeared and saved his life. However, Shen Tian's gaze was fixed on him, so Qin Gao panicked. Could it be that the thirteenth prince is really that? Qin Gao knew that the prince had saved his life and was grateful indeed. Thus, he would willingly serve under the prince and be his servant. Nevertheless, Qin Gao really could not handle that. Although the thirteenth prince was very handsome and his looks would charm millions of girls. Qin Gao was a boy. A boy who was only interested in females. That was his baseline. What if? The prince forces it on me. What should I do? Qin Gao did not have an answer for that. He hesitated for a while before asking, Your Highness, why did you save me? Shen Tian snapped off his concern.filled thoughts and replied, 
why did I save you? Hmm, because it is fate. What? Qin Gao was shocked by the answer. Your Highness, are you making fun of me? Of course not. Shen Tian waved his hand. From today onward, you will be staying in Lan's palace. You don't have to bother doing chores. Just make sure I can find you when needed. Shen Tian decided to keep Qin Gao by his side for further observation. As long as Qin Gao was not doing any work, he would not be considered as a servant. Thus, his main character aura should not affect Shen Tian too much. At least, it would not cost his life. BVEC well, those were Shen Tian's simple thoughts, but Qin Gao had interpreted them wrongly. No chores and just be contactable. That's not how a eunuch should be treated. Qin Gao was on the verge of crying. He had just escaped from violent torture, and now he needed to cast couch. Your Highness. I really cannot do it. Chapter 7 Ways to Improve Providence You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Shintian had no idea what Qin Gao was thinking about. He thought for a moment and said, Uncle Goe, please make a copy of the Demon Book of Hyuga and pass it to Gao later. Yes, Your Highness. Eunuch Goe was completely fine with it. From his perspective, the Demon Book of Hyuga belonged to the prince anyway. The reason he was cultivating it was so that he could be strong enough to protect the prince. Since the prince was willing to let Qin Gao learn this art too, Eunuch Goe would ask no questions. Also, prepare a room for Gao. Shen Tian turned around and prepared to leave. The Demon Book of Hyuga was Qin Gao's fortuitous opportunity anyway. Even if Shen Tian kept it away from Qin Gao, the latter would chance upon a new fortuitous encounter. Shen Tian might as well give it to Qin Gao and do him a favor. In case Qin Gao became someone impressive in the future, he would have an additional friend. Right after Shen Tian finished his sentence, something magical happened. Shen Tian felt that his body became lighter as though an invisible chain had been broken. It felt real and imaginary at the same time. Shen Tian turned around and looked at Qin Gao. His halo had changed color again. All the green spots had disappeared, and it became red again, just like the first time Shen Tian had met him. Shen Tian took out a mirror from his pocket and looked at his own halo. Although it was still black, it was not as dense as before. Could it be that I returned the fortuitous opportunity back to Qin Gao? Or I'm sharing it with him? Shen Tian decided to give it a test. He stared at Qin Gao's halo and said, on second thought, forget it, Uncle Gui. There is no need to copy the demon book of Hyuga. When he said that, his body felt the weight again, while green spots appeared on Qin Gao's halo. Uncle Gui nodded and said, Yes, Your Highness. Although he had no idea why the prince changed his mind so quickly, he trusted all the thirteenth prince's decisions. He had no doubts at all. Then, Shen Tian spoke again. Well, I changed my mind. Please make one copy, dot then, Qin Gao's halo became bright red again. Shen Tian was extremely excited as his theory was verified. Yes, Your Highness. Uncle Gui felt a little helpless. In his mind, the prince was teasing the low dot ranking eunuch. That's so mean. Qin Gao finally spoke up. Berm. I do not really need it. Truth be told, Qin Gao was frightened as the 13th prince was too good to him. Shen Tian had already saved him and provided him with a place to stay. At the same time, he did not need to work. Now the prince had even decided to allow him to study some demon book of Hyuga. Although Qin Gao had no idea what that was, seeing that even the thirteenth prince was so indecisive, it must be something extraordinary. It could even be something that was worth the entire palace. Qin Gao was already indebted to the prince and didn't know how to repay the prince's kindness. If he accepted the demon book of Hyuga, there could be nothing he could do. As Qin Gao spoke, 
green spots appeared on his halo again. Shen Tian was unhappy about it as he had finally found a way to change his fate. There was no way he could allow Qin Gao to spoil his plan. No way. Nope, you must learn. Shen Tian said firmly, not only will you learn the basics of qi refinement, but you will also learn about the basics of foundation establishment, golden core, and nascent soul too. Your Highness. You owe me your life, you cannot refuse. When Shen Tian spoke those words, Qin Gao's halo shone brightly, even brighter than before. Not only were the green spots gone, but there were also slightly golden parts on the edge too. To Shen Tian's surprise, he noticed a change in Eunuch Gui's halo too. The light green became darker. It was like the color of a dense forest, full of liveliness. On the edge of it, there were red spots. The halo evolved. Am I on the right track to change my fate? If I share fortuitous opportunities with someone with high providence, will the overall providence of everyone involved be increased as well? Shen Tian quickly took out his mirror and observed his halo. It was still black, but not as dark as before. At least, Shen Tian no longer felt that he would be struck by lightning if he stepped out of the palace. Finally, after so many days, Shen Tian saw a glimpse of hope. He was very touched and started tearing up. Upon seeing that, Qin Gao panicked. Please don't cry. I will listen to whatever you say. The thirteenth prince is a royal. How could I make him cry? It's just some demon art. The prince saved my life, and it belongs to him now. Cultivating some skill is nothing to be afraid of. Qin Gao had already mentally prepared himself. Good, good. Also, I'm not crying. I'm just excited. Shen Tian rolled his eyes and said, Uncle Gui, you can bring him out now. Uncle Gui nodded. Yes, your highness. I'm excited, just like you. I'll bring him to his room and teach him the cultivation technique. Shen Tian started planning for his next move when they left. He did not dare to cultivate any skill yet unless his halo's color was white. He still had the bad memory of his last qi deviation. Since he had already found a way to improve his providence, he planned to meet more people with good providence and share their fortuitous encounters. Shen Tian believed that he would be able to change his halo's color to white in no time. In the end, he would become a normal person too. Where should I find all these people? Shen Tian started thinking. Normally, these people would be extremely successful. In the Palace of Country of Fire, those with higher imperial status had higher providence too. Shen Ao was a good example. Since he was so talented in cultivation and was halfway to the Grand White Grotto, heaven, his providence must be good too. Shen Tian was certain that Shen Ao's halo was at least a green one with red spots. It could even be a red ring with a green spot. If he could stare at Shen Ao for some time and shared the fortuitous opportunity with him, Shen Tian believed that his providence would definitely improve. Unfortunately, there was a problem. Shen Ao was kind of avoiding him. As a matter of fact, everyone with good providence in the palace avoided and hid from Shen Tian. They were not like eunuchs that needed to obey him. If Shen Tian was unable to meet them in person, it would be impossible for him to obtain their fortuitous opportunities. What should I do now? That's a vicious circle. So troublesome. Where can I find people with good providence and at the same time not hiding from me? Shen Tian was deep in thoughts. Chapter 8 My ability is not working anymore. You are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Myriad Spirit Garden was the largest spirit or marketplace. Its influence even reached the many kingdoms nearby, and there were many hidden talents within. That was the destination of Shen Tian, Eunuch Gui, and Qin Gao. Three days ago, Shen Tian had discovered a way to increase his providence, that was to form good relationships with those blessed by providence. 
Thus, he had decided to search for them in quantity and think of ways to freeload their fortuitous opportunities. However, after three days of trying, Shen Tian had to admit that there really was no one that viewed him favorably in the whole country of Fire Palace. Be it Concubine Xu, Concubine Hua, Concubine De, the Seventh Prince, Eighth Prince, the Ninth Princess, and so on, every time Shen Tian had wanted to go and find them, they would always use excuses, such as, feeling under the weather, had gone out, or, it was inconvenient to meet. Shen Tian could not help but feel extremely dejected. However, another discovery sparked a new hope in Shen Tian, not only those blessed by providence would have fortuitous opportunities. Those with green or white halos also had chances for such encounters. Unfortunately, the probability was smaller, and the value was lower only. Shen Tian had seen such a fortuitous opportunity on a certain palace maid's halo the previous day. The image had shown that the palace maid named Xia he would pick up a knight dot shining pearl, which cost thousands of silver tails, in the imperial garden. Therefore, Shen Tian had picked up that pearl beforehand and gave it to that palace maid. As expected, the halo on top of the palace maid's head had glowed more brightly and even turned slightly greener. Meanwhile, the pitch. Black halo on top of Shen Tian had also become paler. Such a discovery had made Shen Tian so excited that he had even pushed away the palace maid, who had tried giving him a hug of gratitude. Naturally, Shen Tian wanted to leave the palace badly, and he brought along eunuch Gui and Qin Gao too. Since Shen Tian had discovered that even normal people would have fortuitous opportunities, he would definitely choose to visit the place where fortuitous opportunities would appear most frequently to increase his providence. Meanwhile, Myriad Spirit Garden was such a place as it was filled with infinite possibilities and encounters. As everyone knew, the most important things in the cultivation world were mentor, money, partner, and location. Money meant cultivation resources, including the most important one, which was spirit stones. Spirit stones contained an abundance of spirit chi. It was a consumable resource that cultivators used to cultivate as it could greatly increase their cultivation speed. People with and without spirit stones could have an over 10 times different cultivation speed even with the same talents and cultivation techniques. That was the reason that spirit stones were a resource most cultivators would seek for their whole lives. The so dot called spirit stone mine was a mine that would produce spirit stones. Cultivators would dig out spirit ores from the mine, then they would cut out raw spirit stones from within and refine them, and thus form standard dot-sized spirit stones. However, not every spirit ore would produce spirit stones after being cut open. Some spirit ores may seem to be overflowing with spirit chi, but only bits and pieces of spirit stones could be found inside after being sliced open. Their value was extremely low. Meanwhile, some spirit ores may not look much from the outside, but they may produce middle.grade or even superior.grade spirit stones after cutting them open. Those were worth a fortune. Legends had it that in some cultivation sects, people had discovered supreme.grade dermic treasures, exceptionally outstanding sutras, or even a peerlessly beautiful woman, sleeping within. It was not impossible for those legends to be true. In the cultivation world, there was the dictum, self, hyper-treasures. Every powerful dermic treasure and sutra contained the laws of dharma and could influence the spirit chi in the world. If they were left without a master for a long time, then these dermic treasures would start to absorb spirit chi, forming a protective layer of spirit chi on the surface. As long as enough time passed, these spirit chi protective layers would convert into spirit ores. Although they would look no different from normal spirit ores, if someone were lucky enough to cut them open, they might be able to obtain a powerful dermic treasure that was in good condition or even ultimate cultivation techniques. In the tens of thousands of years that had passed, many lucky individuals had benefited from such encounters. Naturally, Myriad Spirit Garden, a spirit or marketplace, had been formed for that reason. The merchants within Myriad Spirit Garden would buy spirit ores from all places and place them on the shelves, listing different prices according to their quality. If the customers felt that the price was acceptable, 
they would buy the spirit ore and cut it open themselves or ask the shop to cut it for them. However, regardless of whether the customer gained something or suffered a loss, neither the shop nor the customers could regret their decisions. The rules were similar to stone gambling in Shintian's previous life. After learning that even normal people could have fortuitous opportunities, the first thing that had popped into Shintian's mind was the myriad spirit garden. Although the chances of finding people that were blessed by providence were low, the frequency of fortuitous opportunities was definitely the highest. That was because, in the whole myriad spirit garden, tens of thousands of people would all be trying their luck there. Given the numbers of the gathered people, even if there was only one out of ten that would make a profit, then this place should be filled with such fortuitous opportunities. If that were the case, not only could Shintian get rid of the black halo on his head, but also the three of them would not need to worry about spirit stones needed for their cultivation in the future. Once he thought of that, Shintian even felt that he was a genius. Unfortunately, when Shintian actually arrived at Myriad Spirit Garden, he realized it was just all in his head. The stone gambling was not as simple as Shintian had imagined. From what Shintian could see, even though the huge myriad spirit garden was filled with people, only a few of them had images of fortuitous opportunities playing in their halos. Also, according to the images, even if they obtained spirit stones from the spirit ores, they would mostly be of low quality. Those spirit ores basically cost tens of spirit stones, and after being cut open, the spirit stones inside would amount to 30 to 50. Even the most common inferior dot grade spirit stone in the cultivation world could be sold for 1,000 tails of silver, or even higher, in the secular world. If one could obtain 10 spirit stones, which was 10,000 tails of silver, it was enough for a normal person to live a luxurious life. However, such small gains could not satisfy Shintian's original expectations. Shouldn't there be people blessed by providence in Myriad Spirit Garden? Shouldn't they be able to cut open shockingly awesome items by spending only a few spirit stones per day and then head toward the peak of their lives? So it's all nonsense, isn't it? While Shintian was plagued by self-doubt, someone exclaimed from the east, Little Spirit Fairy has arrived. As that voice echoed, the crowd was instantly stirred up. What? Little Spirit Fairy is here to gamble spirit ores again. Brother, help me grab a good seat. Wait for me. I'll go there immediately after cutting this ore. Who is Little Spirit Fairy? You don't even know who Little Spirit Fairy is. You're too ignorant. She is the spirit or appraiser that is the best at searching for spirit stones and assessing spirit ores in our myriad spirit garden. Not only so, but she's also a stunning beauty. The one who is able to marry little spirit fairy would earn it big time. Not only would one have such a beauty as their wife, but they would also not need to worry about spirit stones anymore. Dot as Shintian listened to the people's conversations beside him, he could not help but be curious about this so dot called little spirit fairy. He followed the crowd and quickly arrived in front of a spirit or shop named Sky Spirit Pavilion and saw her in person. It was a girl wearing an azure green long dress. As she was back dot facing Shintian, he could not see her face. However, just those tender and slender white fingers and thin waist were enough to trigger people's endless imaginations, making their thoughts go wild. It was not difficult to imagine that she was definitely a drop dot dead gorgeous beauty. Currently, what Shintian was observing was not her body in appearance, but the halo on her head. Little Spirit Fairy was quite blessed by Providence as the color of her halo was pure red. Although it was still mixed with a wisp of green light, it was already close to Qin Gao's halo quality, much better than most nobles. To Shintian's surprise, he could see no image of a fortuitous opportunity in her halo. Naturally, Shintian was extremely puzzled. Logically speaking, if she had any fortuitous opportunities, they would definitely appear in her halo. Is it possible that Little Spirit Fairy will gain nothing good from cutting open oars? Or is it possible that my ability does not work on her? Chapter 9 Drop, dead gorgeous little spirit fairy you are listening at novel full.audio. 
Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Shintian stared at Little Spirit Fairy, as he wanted to see just how this girl was special. Your Highness, you're interested in her. Eunuch Goe suggested, how about just bringing her back to the palace? Concubine Lon would definitely be happy as she rests in peace if she knew your highness will get married. Qin Gao also nodded his head and hurriedly gave his opinion. That's right. That little spirit fairy has peerless beauty. She's a perfect match with your highness. He could see how Shen Tian was observing little spirit fairy. Qin Gao had already started to cultivate the demon book of Hyuga and improved greatly. After coming in contact with the cultivation world, Qin Gao had once again understood how fearsome and precious that cultivation technique was. However, at the same time, Qin Gao became more and more anxious. His Highness had saved his life and even taught him such a one dot of dot a dot kind sutra. He was unable to repay this kindness. If His Highness makes me dedicate myself to him, what should I do? That was why Qin Gao had hoped for Shen Tian to set his sights on Little Spirit Fairy with all his heart, it would be better for everyone. Of course, Shen Tian did not know what Qin Gao was thinking. Had he known, he would definitely eliminate him even if he was blessed by providence. Currently, people were flooding the doors of the Sky Spirit Pavilion. The three of them had a hard time as they squeezed in the crowd. It was only after they had taken out a few ingots of silver that they snatched a good spot and were finally able to see Little Spirit Fairy's appearance. If Little Spirit Fairy's back could make one's thoughts go wild, then Little Spirit Fairy's front was enough to make people feel so inferior that not even a hint of improper thoughts would appear in their minds. She wore an azure green dress, and her corset drew the curve of her thin waist, which could be held with one hand. She looked light and graceful, resembling a fairy that had descended to the world. Meanwhile, her appearance was so pure and beautiful that it was like the heaven's most exquisite masterpiece. Her gaze, her smile, just a look from her, and it was like she was shining. Her appearance could even be compared to Shen Tian. Surprisingly, not everyone wished to see Little Spirit Fairy, for example, the Sky Spirit Pavilion's shopkeeper song. Fairy, why are you here again? When shopkeeper Song saw Little Spirit Fairy, his smiling face was even uglier than crying. The exquisite sapphire tripod that you obtained the last time made me distressed for a total of half a month. Little Spirit Fairy smiled slightly, mesmerizing countless people. I heard shopkeeper Song had another batch of good quality spirit ores, so I specially came to take a look. Since the shop is not closed, it should be open for business. Why? Does shopkeeper Song not welcome me? Of course not, how would I dare? I just hope Fairy can be lenient on me. Shopkeeper Song wiped his sweat. There were really few people in Myriad Spirit Garden that would dare to offend Little Spirit Fairy. If he dared to not let Little Spirit Fairy enter his shop, then those crazy fans would even block the entrance of his shop. Little Spirit Fairy slowly walked into the Sky Spirit Pavilion, and her eyes scanned the shelves rows filled with spirit ores. Her eyes were vaguely shining with a golden light. Instantly, exclamations could be heard from the crowd. Eyes shining with golden light. Is it possible this is spirit or appraiser's supreme godly technique, or piercing eyes? Legends say that when one masters the ore piercing eyes, then all ores will be clear as the sky is blue. One could see through the oars without any obstacles. It could be called invincible. Dot, to be able to learn such a godly technique at just 16 years old, she's indeed little spirit fairy. After listening to the crowd's exclamations, Shen Tian seemed to be deep in thought. Is it because little spirit fairy relies on her ability to choose oars? She's not relying on luck like everyone else. Is that why I'm unable to see her fortuitous opportunity? However, such an explanation still feels a little forced. As Shen Tian was feeling doubtful, he stared straight at Little Spirit Fairy. She had already found the spirit or she wanted in the Sky Spirit Pavilion. I've finished choosing, just this one. 
That or was approximately the size of a person's head, grayish dot black, unremarkable, and completely dull. It was not even placed on the shelves. The price placed in front of it was 15 spirit stones. Even if it was converted to silvers, it was only 15,000 tails, extremely cheap. This. The instant shopkeeper Song saw little spirit fairy making her decision, he panicked. She picked such a big one. Unfortunately for him, little spirit fairy had already taken 15 spirit stones out of her purse and placed them on the counter. She smiled gently and said, once chosen and paid, it's mine now. Whether I gain something or make a loss, there's no refund. Shopkeeper Song, you can't renege on it. All right. Shopkeeper Song let out a sigh as if he knew it was unavoidable that he would make a loss this time. Fairy, are you going to cut it open yourself, or should I arrange for someone to help you cut it? In spirit or shops, cutting open oars was also a form of craftsmanship. For the same spirit or, if it was cut open properly and the spirit chi was perfectly retained, then it could be sold at the maximum price. Meanwhile, if it was cut wrongly, then it might even damage the spirit stone's core. In turn, that would allow spirit chi to leak out. It was impossible to contain it for a long time, so its value would drastically drop. Therefore, the shop would also arrange for professional or dot cutters to help buyers cut open the ores they bought. Naturally, such a service was not for free. If valuable spirit stones were obtained, the spirit or shop would need to charge a 10% fee of the profit as the commission for cutting open the ore. That was also one of the shop's main sources of income. One could earn a fortune, but the shop would never make a loss. Little Spirit Fairy put away her purse and said, Shopkeeper Song, you should know my rule. I only choose and never cut open myself. After hearing that Little Spirit Fairy did not plan to personally cut open the ore, Shopkeeper Song's expression became brighter. Well, the shop would definitely sell such a big or sooner or later, so it's the same as selling it to anyone. If we sell to Little Spirit Fairy, we can at least earn the 10% commission. Fairy, please wait a moment. I'll immediately arrange for the best or dot cutter to help you cut open your ore. Shortly after, the outer layers of the ore were carefully removed. When the remaining ore was the size of a fist, a shred of dark green light shone through the ore. Its color and luster made one comfortable by just looking at it. She did it, she did it. She's indeed little spirit fairy. This is a raw spirit stone the size of a fist. It can be cut into at least 100 spirit stones. What the heck do you know? A raw spirit stone that is as large as a fist. There might be spirit crystals inside. If there really are spirit crystals inside, just one would be worth 1000 spirit stones. I'm so jealous. Finally, the ore's outer skin was completely removed, and a crystal clear dark green raw spirit stone, which looked like jade, appeared before everyone. In the raw spirit stone center, a faint luster could be seen from the green dot bean dot sized crystal. Spirit crystals. Spirit crystals were really produced. Shopkeeper Song put on a long face. It looks like spirit crystals were produced within the raw spirit stone. The price is estimated to be between 800 to 1,200 spirit stones. Little Spirit Fairy smiled and said, I'll just count it as 800 spirit stones and sell it to Shopkeeper Song. Shopkeeper Song's face was instantly filled with surprise. Then I won't collect Fairy's commission fee. Please, wait a moment as I go and retrieve the agreed amount. As expected of Little Spirit Fairy, she's really generous. Shopkeeper Song, you should be content. If you let Little Spirit Fairy pick the oars, then you can even earn 400 to 500 spirit stones. That's right. Only my Little Spirit Fairy would be so nice and generous. If it were others, they wouldn't even let you earn half a spirit stone. What do you mean, your Little Spirit Fairy? You're thinking of Bulsh Asterisk T. Why? What are you looking at? Are you trying to pick a fight? 
Although the atmosphere was gradually becoming intense, Little Spirit Fairy was still calm and collected. It was as if even the fact of obtaining hundreds of spirit stones could not affect her. She was as aloof as a fairy. Shopkeeper Song is very generous in doing business. I will come again next time. Upon seeing how Shopkeeper Song's face darkened again, Little Spirit Fairy covered her mouth and smiled lightly. Also, there's quite the number of good items within the ores that Shopkeeper Song has bought this time. Little Spirit Fairy turned and left leisurely. I had once vowed that I would only cut open one or per day, so I will not pick another one today. If anyone is interested, you can try your luck, and maybe you might chance upon a fortuitous encounter. Before Little Spirit Fairy's voice faded, she had already disappeared from everyone's line of sight. As she flicked her sleeve, she did not bring away even a wisp of dust. Chapter 10 How Could You Not Assault Her? You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Atlas Studios Editor Atlas Studios Little Spirit Fairy, a drop-dead gorgeous beauty and graceful like a fairy. Little Spirit Fairy's image was engraved in everyone's hearts. She was perfect and nobody should have improper thoughts toward her. Everyone reluctantly looked at Little Spirit Fairy's departing back. They seemed just like those fans in Shin Tian's previous life, devout and obsessed. Little Spirit Fairy has left again. My love has left me too. Wake up, you have no love. What did Little Spirit Fairy say just now? She seemed to have said that there are plenty of fortuitous encounters in Sky Spirit Pavilion. Little Spirit Fairy has learned the divine skill, or piercing eyes, and she is able to see through all ores. Since she said that there are good ores in the Sky Spirit Pavilion, then there definitely will be. Brothers, it's our chance to get rich. I think that gold spirit or looks quite good. It has an exquisite shape and seems to be glowing. There's definitely a great treasure inside. I think that green one is better. It has a peculiar shape, like a fairy hugging a guchin one. Maybe, a heaven immortal might even appear from within. Don't snatch. Mine, they're all mine. At that moment, the whole Sky Spirit Pavilion's business was flourishing. Meanwhile, Shopkeeper Song's face, which was originally dark, had become slightly better. Shen Tian had a silly look as he reluctantly stared at the direction Little Spirit Fairy had left. It was not that he could not bear for Little Spirit Fairy to leave. He felt uneasy as he still had not figured out what was going on. The ill dot starred 13th Prince's only hope of changing his destiny was to freeload the fortuitous opportunities of those blessed by Providence. Unexpectedly, Shen Tian encountered someone whose fortuitous opportunity he could not check. Thus, he felt that she was a variable and such a change made Shen Tian feel extremely insecure. Your Highness, if you really like her, then go and court her. That's right, Your Highness. Little Spirit Fairy is the one most suitable for you, don't let yourself regret it. Eunuch Gui and Qin Gao had noticed that Shen Tian's face was full of reluctance, so they both urged Shen Tian. Shen Tian said indifferently, Don't you know I am Country of Fire's 13th Prince? How could I stalk a girl? Eunuch Gui whispered, Your Highness, I saw someone sneakily chase after Little Spirit Fairy just now. That person did not look like someone good. What? Someone is sneakily following Little Spirit Fairy with bad intentions. Once Shin Tian heard what Eunuch Gui had said, he was instantly filled with excitement. Logically speaking, when shameless scoundrels were stalking a gorgeous beauty with bad intentions, she would be saved by the brave male lead, who would happen to be passing by. The beauty would be filled with gratitude and promise to marry the male lead to repay him. That wasn't that the most commonly seen and classic plot in novels. Shen Tian had actually encountered such a plot, he was simply too lucky. Since the villain and the beauty had already appeared, then the male lead would also appear shortly. The male lead would definitely be someone blessed by Providence. As long as Shen Tian could become friends with that Providence. Blessed someone, 
he believed that he would quickly encounter another fortuitous opportunity that could improve his halo's color. Shen Tian was in a pleasant mood just from imagining this scenario. Eunuch Gui looked at the smiling Shen Tian and could not help but remind him, Your Highness, you won't be able to make it if you don't chase her now. Shen Tian pulled himself together, and hurriedly said, Let's go. We need to chase after them. Concubine Lan had taught Eunuch Gui the basic cultivation technique in the past, so his original realm had been at the fifth firmament of Qi refinement. After starting to train in Demon Book of Hyuga, he had improved greatly, and within just three days, he had broken through to the seventh firmament of Qi refinement. Coupled with the tracking mystic technique recorded within Demon Book of Hyuga, the three of them quickly chased after Little Spirit Fairy. At that moment, Little Spirit Fairy had already left Myriad Spirit Garden and arrived at a remote alley. She stood within the alley silently and said calmly, Come out. Swoosh. Suddenly, a person landed from the sky in front of Little Spirit Fairy. He smiled and said, Little Spirit Fairy, hand it to me. Indeed, it was extortion. Qin Gao was impatient, so he asked quietly, Your Highness, should we make a move? Shen Tian said calmly, Fool. That's right, you're a fool. Eunuch Gui pulled Qin Gao back and explained softly, Use your brain. That fellow is only robbing her, not assaulting her yet. If His Highness helps her now, at most, he will get a, You're such a nice guy. Little Spirit Fairy is very pretty, and that scoundrel will want to do more things than just rob her. At that point, we will make a move. The hero saves the beauty. His Highness is so handsome, how could that beauty not fall for him? I'm right, aren't I, Your Highness? After listening to Eunuch Gui's explanation, Qin Gao could not help but admire him with all his heart. Such a perfect plan. Your Highness, you're indeed very clever. Shen Tian rolled his eyes. What nonsense! The reason why we have not made a move is simple, the male lead has yet to appear. Shen Tian wanted to befriend that mysterious providence. Blessed male lead, so he would wait for him to appear and save the beauty before he came out to help. Then, since they would have been through thick and thin together, they would become close friends. Thus, it would be more convenient for Shen Tian to freeload his fortuitous opportunities in the future. If Shen Tian helped her now and chased away the villain, the male lead might feel that there was no need to appear. What if the male lead just directly left? Wait, let's wait for a while more. The three of them leaned on the rooftop and silently looked at that scoundrel extorting Little Spirit Fairy. After Little Spirit Fairy saw that scoundrel blocking her way, she sighed and slowly untied the money pouch on her waist. Can't you leave some for me? The scoundrel smirked. Of course. If you're willing to be my partner, then I can even let you have this whole bag of spirit stones. It appeared. The legendary scene of assaulting a beauty. Eunuch Goe was extremely excited. Your Highness, we can make our move now. It's been 16 years. His Highness has finally grown up and become interested in girls. As long as His Highness successfully saves Little Spirit Fairy and captures her heart, he will be able to continue the family line. By then, Concubine Lan would be happy and be able to rest in peace. Qin Gao was also extremely excited. Your Highness, let's make a move. Wait, let's wait for a while more. Shen Tian was not in a hurry, he said calmly, it's still not the time now. That male lead has yet to appear. At the other side. When Little Spirit Fairy heard what the scoundrel said, her face instantly darkened. Impossible, dream on. After that remark, she directly threw the pouch at the scoundrel and turned to leave. Surprisingly, that scoundrel did not chase her. Eunuch Gui panicked. How can he not chase her? Your Highness, we must make a move now. If we don't save her now, then Miss Little Spirit Fairy will leave. It was already rare for the thirteenth prince to encounter such a perfect opportunity, so how could he fumble the ball at such a crucial moment? Eunuch Gui's heart was aching at Shen Tian's lack of action. 
Shen Tian was also heart.broken, this was not the expected plot. Logically, the scoundrel should have stopped little spirit fairy with a lustful smile and prepared to assault her. Then, the male lead would appear at the right moment. How could that villain be so dignified and even ask if little spirit fairy would agree before wanting to assault her? If she does not agree, you will not assault her. Chase up to her and bully her, assault her, and possess her. Where is your professionalism as a villain? If you're so easy to talk to as a villain, how can the male lead become the hero that saves the beauty? It's simply too disappointing. Little spirit fairy walked further and further away, and she was almost out of the alley. Shen Tian sighed. There was no other choice, he could only make a move himself. Although the providence.blessed male lead had not appeared, little spirit fairy was also someone with a red halo. If he saved her now, then conveniently, he could also become friends with little spirit fairy. He might be able to freeload little spirit fairies fortuitous opportunities. That was better than nothing. After he made his decision, Chen Tian shouted loudly, Scoundrel, how bold of you to dare to try and rob such a kind and beautiful woman in broad daylight. Shen Tian took a deep breath and abruptly jumped down from the rooftop, landing in front of Little Spirit Fairy. Bam! Ah, darn it, who threw the banana skin? How could that person be so inconsiderate?